um, it's been a week that um, we study your words and help us to understand more about your message. And thank you for um, David Choi to prepare for tonight's Bible study and bless him with your heart and the Holy Ghost to help us to remember your words. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay, let's uh, start from the very beginning. <laughs> well, uh, today's title is uh, on the eighth day. It's, uh, today is uh, March tw uh, 25th in uh, the year 2022 of our Lord. And uh, the title is, um, we got it from, uh, you know, the Torah portion that um, most of the Jewish synagogue would use uh, for their, for their um, Sabbath. And uh, so today is uh, March 25th, um, it's already after 6 p.m. And it's already uh, their Sabbath, you know, even though we don't practice Sabbath, you know, but uh, we, we, we use that as a starting point. And uh, so it also happened to be the 22nd day of the month uh, in Ada, Ada number two, because uh, this is a leap year for the Hebrew calendar. And the title means uh, the Ek Shemini. And um, so what's going on, right? <laughs> Uh, it said Shemini is the 26th reading from the Torah and third reading from the book of Leviticus. So uh, we are in uh, the book of Leviticus. Shemini means the eighth. It comes from the first word of uh, Leviticus 9, 1, verse 1, chapter 9. And uh, so uh, we're going to, um, you know, go, go over it. The text goes on to describe the events of the eight days after setting up the tabernacle and uh, worship service. Uh, and then followed by a quote, a uh, tragic incident. The uh, reading concludes with the uh, dietary law regarding the animal fit for consumption, consumptions and prohibition regarding those that are unfit. So uh, as I said, you know, uh, they will be covering uh, part of the uh, chapter nine, chapter 10, 11 uh, for uh, Leviticus. And also uh, they would be reading uh, Second Samuel, uh, talking about David bring, bring the art to Jerusalem. So uh, it start with uh, chapter nine. So I'm going to ask um, Gerard to read the first four verses of chapter nine. <clears throat> then okay. also the last few verses also of the same chapter. Okay. Chapter nine, and it came to pass on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elder of elders of Israel. And he said unto Aaron, take thee a young calf for a sin offering and ram for a burnt offering without blemish, and offer them before the Lord. And unto the children of Israel, thou shalt speak saying, Take ye a kid of the goats of for a sin of for a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb over the first year without blemish for a burnt offering, also a bullock and a ram for peace offerings to sacrifice before the Lord, and a meat offering mingled with oil. For today the Lord will appear unto you. And Aaron lifted up his hand toward the people and blessed them and came down from offering of the sin offering and the burnt offering and peace offering. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came a fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat 
which when all the people saw, they shouted and fell on the faces. Mm, thank you, Jara. Now, um, mm. seems like chapter nine, you know, seems like it's a really uh, good chapter. Well, uh, I mean, come on, you know, uh, when would be a day, you know, that the law would appear in front of you? <laughs> and, you know, for today, the law will appear unto you. Wow. Ooh. You know, and then, and then uh, they, you know, Moses did all this, you know, uh, with Aaron, uh, you know, and it's on the eighth day, you know, wow, you know, man, you know, you have the, all the offering, you know, without a hitch, you know, sin offering, burn offering, and, um, and it seems like, you know, the, the people, the people, um, the children of Israel was having a good time too. You know, Aaron lift up his hand, taught the people, blessing them, you know. Wow, man, you know, this is, uh, this is, this would have been a very good day. You know, chapter nine, good day, you know. It's the eighth day would have been. <sighs> well, anyway. Uh, but, you know, in order to have a better understanding, we have to know about, you know, what does it mean by the eighth day, you know? Well, I mean, the eighth day, you know, means that previously there are seven days. So, you know, in order to have, um, you know, a, a better understanding, you know, we have to read uh, the previous, read, you know, the Torah portion last week, you know? The, the chapter eight, you know, because, you know, if this is the eighth day, that, that means something happened on the last seven days, you know. So uh, in order to arrive at this eighth day, you know, seems like it was a glorious day. The law will appear unto them. And, uh, you know, the uh, tabernacle is set up, you know, the sacrifice were done and the law appear, you know, and Aaron's giving blessing to all the people, you know. Wow, man, you know, so uh, we better no, no, uh, learn something about what happened on the last seven days, okay? <laughs> well, the last seven days uh, in, is in chapter, uh, chapter eight. <laughs> so, you know, so uh, I, 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 because it's a very long chapter, you know, uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, study everything. So, you know, I just have uh, bits and pieces of chapter eight, you know, like first uh, six words and then the middle portion, you know, 22 and 23, and also the last last few verses of chapter eight. So as usual, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Gerard uh, to read for us. <laughs> okay. Um, from, uh, the whole uh, from the top? Yeah, from the okay. top. Yeah, thank you. And the Lord spoke unto Moses saying, take Aaron and his sons with him and the garments and the oiling and, and, and oiling oil and butler for the sin offering and two rams and a basket of unleavened bread and gather though all the congregation together unto the door of the terminal of the congregation and Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Moses said unto the congregation, this is the thing which the Lord commanded to be done. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. And he brought the, the other ram, the ram of consecration, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he threw it. And Moses took off, took off the blood of it, and put it upon the tip of Aaron's right ear, and upon the thumb of the right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days until the days of your cons consecration be at an end. For seven days shall he consecrate you 
as he had done this day. So the Lord had commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Therefore, shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation day and night, seven days, and keep the charge of the Lord, that ye die not. For so I am commanded. So Aaron and his sons did all things which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so this uh, in chapter eight, you know, he, Moses and the Lord talk about seven days. So, you know, the, the in the seven days, you know, they're supposed to get everything ready, you know, get the garments, get the anointing oil, and the and and also the animals for sacrifice, you know, different kind, and you know, get things together, you know, and um, and then get the congregations, you know, get, getting the uh, set up together, you know, uh, waiting outside, outside, you know, the uh, maybe the compound, you know, but the, uh, at the door, you know, they can watch, you know, but uh, they're not supposed to be in in the, you know, uh, temple ground or tabernacle ground, you know. But anyway, so those are things, you know, as the Lord commanded. And Moses, make sure that they have done it, you know, <laughs> even watching, you know, watching. Uh, maybe, you know, each day, you know, they're supposed to wash themselves, you know, to, to show, you know, they, they really want to be cleansed, you know. And, uh, but anyway, um, and they also did something, you know, very um, special, you know, like they use the ram or consecrations and then, you know, to make them holy, right? Because um, obviously the, the priest and the high priest are just common men, you know, they're not that holy, okay? Um, but, you know, in order to make them, you know, to, even though they are, they are Aaron's son, okay, they have the, uh, uh, you know, some qualifications, you know, but uh, still, you know, they have to be holy, you know, it's not like, uh, you know, uh, all the Aaron's sons are that holy, okay. Uh, but anyway, so uh, they put the blood of their uh, consecration lamb, you know, the, the ram, you know, of consecration. Uh, some blood on the ear, on the right ear, and also on the thumb of the right hand, and also on the great toe of the right foot. Right, okay. You know, where is, where, you know, symbolic or very significant, okay? Uh, showing, you know, um, um, you know, the head, the, the, the hand, also the foot, you know. Are uh, all blessed or all you know uh, sanitized, <laughs> make holy, <laughs> and and then and then you know they are supposed to say uh, stay there in the tabernacle uh, of the congregations for seven days. Seven days they are not supposed to leave. They have to stay inside the compound. You know maybe wash every day. You know and um, you know. Um, Try to look, um, you know, serious. You know, try to try to look up. You know, uh, prepare for themselves. You know, and so forth. But they, the thing is, they are not supposed to leave the compound for the seven days. You know, and then you know, there's also a warning. The warning is, yeah, you shall abide at the door of the tabernacle, of the congregation, day and night, seven days, and keep the charge of the law that you die not, you know, so in other words, you know, you know, to, to the God in heavens is a very serious thing, very serious, you know, this is a religious act, you know, and everybody is watching, and, uh, but they did it, they did it, you know, Moses, uh, the, the law command, and then Moses, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, make sure, you know, by, by the hand of Moses, you know, make sure they did it, okay, so the priest and the high priest, you know, uh, 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 you know, did all this uh, washing and cleansing and uh, uh, make holy, you know, the consecration, you know, the anointing, you know, uh, the whole work. Now, that's, that is the seven days, the seven days, okay, previous to the, uh, on the eighth day, you know, on that, uh, you know, uh, 
the fact that the fire came to consume the um, all offering, the altar, the sacrifice, and uh, everything was, you know, you know, uh, whatever happened on the eighth day, it was because uh, they they are buying, they they listen to, you know, Moses, what Moses said. Okay, now, so what's what's the meaning? What's the meaning? Well, it seems like you know. Uh, you know, uh, many times in the uh, in the book of Moses, uh, particularly in the law of Moses, uh, there's a mention of the eighth day. There's a mention of the eighth days, you know. And then uh, one of the uh, first example was um, right after ten commandments were given. So so it seems like this is, you know, this is uh, one of the you know, out of the 613 law, you know, this is one of them in Exodus 22. So I'm going to ask Yara read for us. Um, the small words? Uh, no, uh, just uh, two verses below. Yeah, oh, okay. I'll repeat anyway. Yeah. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of the rib for the, for of thy ripe fruits and of thy liquors. The first one of thy sons thou shalt thou give unto me. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen, and with thy ship seven days it shall be with his stem. On the eighth day thou shalt give it me. Okay. So, uh, you know, this is one of the law. You know, in other words, uh, so, you know, if uh, they have, um, uh, you know, first harvest, you know, and then uh, when the fruit uh, become ripe and uh, all the liquors or, you know, whatever uh, produce uh, they got, you know, and uh, even the firstborn, you know, supposedly, um, you know, they are supposed to be offered to God, right? Now, uh, of course, you know, it doesn't mean killing them, but, uh, but basically, you know, that's some of the rule, right? And also, uh, uh, definitely for the oxen and sheep. Uh, and then, you know, in order to offer, you know, the, their firstborn, their firstborn belong to God, you know, uh, the oxen and sheep also. And, um, but not for the first seven days. In other words, the first seven days, they shall stay with the mother, right? Seven days, you know, and then on the eighth day, then, then it would be given to. So, so in other words, the, it's uh, it's like as if the first seven days is not uh, does not count, but the, on the eighth day, you know, then something you know is a holy day, is a, a day you know of uh, uh, you know importance. The eighth day is a, a day of importance, you know, in the um, Mosaic law, you know. Now, so uh, yeah, let's. Uh, with some more uh, example, some more example. Uh, we, uh, you know, the Torah portion do, do not cover Leviticus 12, but, you know, I have to get it out from there, you know, to, to show, um, you know, something about the eighth day again. You know, uh, Leviticus 12, uh, please, uh, Gerard. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived seed, and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the segregation separation for her infirmity, infirmity. Shall she be unclean? And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Okay, okay. So in other words, you know, this is another example. Uh, seems like as if the first seven days are, are, you know, are not considered uh, clean days or, or a good day, you know, to offer something to God. Only on the eighth day, you know, then, then something, something uh, more important uh, when you try to, uh, you know, uh, make a uh, consequence, you know, try to uh, uh, have a new priest, or high priest, you know, in, as in the case of uh, chapter nine, what's going to be, uh, 
then the eighth day is a day, you know, and even for the child too, you know, if uh, you have a man child, a baby, uh, you know, uh, for the day of circumcision has to be on the eighth day, you know, after birth. Um, and, and so, you know, it seems like that there's a uh, significance uh, in God's point of view, you know, the eighth day is, is, uh, is the day, you know, um, that, um, you know, the, uh, the day of uncleanness or the day of, um, you know, no, no, you know, uh, you know, in, in order to, to make something happen to, 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 to please the law, to, to offer it to the law. Okay. So, uh, let, let me have an, uh, another example and then uh, we will try to, uh, get uh, everything together. Now, this one is uh, chapter 14. Again, it's not in the Torah portion of the, this week, but, you know, I have to take it out from 14 because uh, it's talking about the leper, you know, those those uh, people with leprosy, you know, Ma Fung, and, uh-huh. then, uh, and then, you know, seems like, you know, Leviticus chapter 14, you know, have something talking about the, the leper, you know, the same way. Uh, so I'm going to ask Jura again, you know, to read for us. And uh, for you know nine and ten and also fourteen. Uh, but it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head and his bread and his beard and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off, and he shall wash his clothes. Also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day, he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one of one eve lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth deals of the fine flour of a meat offering, mingled with oil and one lot of oil. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the Transpass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. Mm, very interesting. So the high priest, the high priest and the priest have to be cleansed like that too, you know, with with the blood or the consecration or, uh, or trespass offering or whatever blood, and then put it on the right ear and then right hand and then the right toe, the big, the big toe. <laughs> so, so, you know, it seems like, you know, in God's eyes, uh, it doesn't matter if you are, are, are going to be a high priest or priest, well, you know, or a leper. Uh, God, uh, you know, from the from the um, Mosaic law, from the sacrifice, He required the same thing. He required the same thing. You know, a lot of time, you know, people think, "Oh, leper, leper." You know, uh, he, he's not important. A lot of time, most of the leper are beggar, and uh, the high priest. Oh, they are high position. Oh, they are they are they are much better. You know, in uh, society. You know the high priest and the priest. You know, obviously, they are, they they're going to have um, a lot of uh, benefits of for being a high priest and priest. But you know, in God's eyes, they are all the same because uh, lepers actually uh, is is kind of like um, representing the sinners. You know, sinners. You know, so uh, you know, so uh, leper have to be cleansed. You know, and uh, sinners too have to be cleansed. So. Uh, you know, doesn't matter. You are high priest or priest, and uh, a lot of time people confuse. You know, they they think, oh, the high priest. Wow, you know, man, he's been a pastor for uh, so many years. You know, he uh, very well educated. He knows everything about the Bible and so forth. And come on, you know, they are all sinners. You know, don't don't think the high priest or the senior pastor or a bishop or whoever or the religious leader. In God's eyes, they're all sinners. So that's why they all need to be cleansed. <laughs> the cleansed the same way, you know, on the year, 
you know, you know, the, the, the whole person, the whole person, you know, you know, because uh, the thinking, you know, the thinking is like the ye. And then the hand, you know, whatever they did, you know, all the past scenes. And then the, the toe, you know, wh wherever, wherever they have been to, you know, uh, you know, did this, did that, you know, uh, you know, it's all kind of sin, sin, you know, in the sinful nature, you know, um, you know, it's a, it's a whole fresh, whole person, you know, there are all kinds of sins, you know, but anyway, it's all, all done, you know, with the blood, you know, the, the, without blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So that's why, you know, the high priest did the same thing and the, and the leper, um, you know, also required that. Now, uh, another thing, uh, you know, even though this talk about the leper to be cleansed, the fact of matter is there's no records in the Old Testament. Uh, most lepers in their days were never cleansed. Uh, there were some, some people become lepers because they offended the law. Uh, they offended God, you know, so they become a leper. Uh, at least a Miriam, uh, the sister of um, uh, Moses, uh, you know, she, she uh, got jealous and uh, envious of, um, uh, the, you know, the, the um, Moses uh, and, and Aaron, you know, uh, uh, um, Aaron to, to, to um, um, you know, um, how should I put it? You know, Mo Moses marry a, a, a black uh, lady. And uh, so Miriam complained, you know, and then uh, Kyle Laya raised his thing, you know, but anyway, she, that's why she become, <laughs> you know, white, like lepers, you know, for, for, uh, for a week or so, you know, but anyway, uh, but, you know, in, in, in general, you know, there was no record of uh, leprosy was healed in the Old Testament, except uh, the uh, Syrian general, the Syrian general. But because he's a Syrian, so uh, he he uh, he did not have to go to a temple to to be cleansed. You know? So in other words, this law was instituted. Uh, you know, if uh, somehow you know a leper become uh, healed, somehow it's not by the priest. The priest never did it, and uh, and uh, but uh, you know they still have to go to a temple. You know, find a priest, and then. Uh, uh, spend seven days, you know, watch watching out every day about the uh, his uh, whether the leprosy come back, you know, and then uh, and then on the eighth day, then uh, he can be cleansed, you know, with the uh, religious uh, uh, offerings, you know, sacrifice and all that, you know. So so you know, seems like you know, typically, uh, seems like the first seven days, the first seven days. Um, it's not good enough uh, for the uh, religious cleansing of you know for the, for the for the person to be cleansed. Uh, it, no matter you know, doesn't matter if uh, a, a woman giving birth to a, a, a son or a, a high priest, and um, you know uh, get, getting ready to be consecrated. You know, the first seven days doesn't count, and it is have to be on the eighth day. Then. Uh, uh, you know, with, you know, the mosaic sacrifice, then it'd be, uh, it'd be done. Now, so what's that mean? What's that mean? Well, uh, to put it simply, because the first seven days uh, of the process is like the creation. In other words, in a natural life, in a natural life, in the creation, um, no one gets uh, saved, uh, you know, uh, laterally. You know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, if I join a religion or if I uh, become a Jew or if I uh, do this or do that or, or practice Mosaic law. No, the first seven days doesn't count. You know, so in our words, it's, it has to be a supernatural, a spiritual uh, renewal, a spiritual forgiveness. It has to be on the eighth day. That's why, you know, after we become a, a Christian, we be, become a believers, and then the law in the in the in the New Testament, and then he will say, uh, "We are now the new creation." New creation means what? It's not the first seven days. It's not by natural, you know, like like you cannot see in a church, and uh, somehow naturally you become a Christian. No, 
it has to be a supernatural. Supernatural means uh, that somehow, you know, you, you call on the Lord and you believe that uh, he would save you. And then uh, you, with your mouth, with your heart, you know, you believe so by faith. And uh, then, uh, you know, Holy Spirit would uh, come on in you. You might not see it, but uh, he's there. He become, uh, uh, you know, he renewed, you know, he, he quickened your, your, your death. You know, you were dead. Uh, and everyone that were uh, uh, not safe yet, you know, they were uh, a dead person waiting to, to perish. Uh, you know, there was no life in him. And then, then you know, so, so on the eighth day, you know, we become a new creation after we believe. Uh, and, and it cannot be on the first seven days. In other words, you, you cannot be uh, uh, somehow you naturally by, um, you know, the original creation, somehow you become a believer. You know, it's not that way. It has to be, uh, you know, a supernatural thing. It is a spiritual thing, it's a supernatural thing, okay? So anyway, uh, we'll, we'll cover some more, you know, we'll, we'll try to get back to this, uh, uh, you know, thinking. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, of course, uh, you know that um, uh, David, uh, the dynasty of Saul is uh, the old covenant, uh, the dynasty of Saul, and then, but the dynasty of David is the new covenant. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, um, Ask uh, Gerard to read the uh, first Samuel about how the law chose David in uh, chapter 16 or Samuel, first Samuel. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord see not as man see, for man look on the outward appearance, but the Lord look on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab Abin and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord had not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remain yet the youngest. And behold, he keep, his, he keep the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. Uh, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goody to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, and know him. For this is he. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so apparently, uh, Jesse do, did not think too highly of David, you know, because, uh, you know, all the older brothers are, you know, lo look strong, tall, uh, you know, have a good countenance, you know, and, uh, you know, very presentable, you know, but, you know, he, he thought uh, Jesse was thinking, hey, you know, as a young boy, you know, he's, um, he's just a teenager, uh, you know, so I have him uh, keep the sh ship, you know, he, he was not even in the uh, first group, you know, <laughs> all the seven, seven uh, older brothers were, were there to be chosen, but, uh, but uh, you know, but the Lord chose David, who was in the pasture, you know, he, 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 he uh, you know, in a uh, family uh, life, you know, he, he did not count was, you know, was not counted uh, as important. Uh, he, he, you know, he just sent me out, you know, I, he, he's, uh, you know, keeping the, uh, keeping the sheep in the pastures. But anyway, the Lord chose David and David is the number eight. So, you know, all these numbers and all this order and, uh, you know, many details, actually it seems like, you know, the Lord want to 
bring out the number eight, you know. So uh, David was a number eight son. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just telling you, you know, the new creation, the new creation, um, you know, the number eight is very important. That means, you know, uh, if you want to know, if you want to know, uh, you know, some of the time, you know, you have many choices to be made. And you don't, you don't know, you know, what, what really constitutes as a God's will, you know, you have to understand, you know, it's not the natural things. You know, the natural things are not, are not necessary from God, you know. Uh, you know, uh, because God's will, God's things is uh, of the new creation and it is supernatural and it is spiritual. So um, a lot of time, you know, uh, when people... Um, you know, the, a lot of time, you know, when people look at things, you know, they, uh, they uh, go by the first reaction. You know, they go by the first reaction, you know. It's like, like some people would say things and then get, get you upset and then your first reaction would be very, very upset. You know, you, you, you have the chemical uh, uh, reaction uh, to, you know, provocations, you know. And then uh, same way, you know, you, a lot of time you look at the outside, you know, so people look at the outside, the first reaction is, wow, you know, this guy uh, is uh, really uh, presentable, you know, oh, wow, this guy is going to be a great president. <laughs> if, if you're using that, you know, uh, the look on the outside countenance or on the height of his statue, um, well, you know, it's not a, a, a lot of time, it's not from God. Yeah. So, you know, the problem is, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, that's how people judge the president or judge uh, anything. <laughs> you know, they judge a uh, look on the outside, you know, but the law said, you know, I look on the inside. So, so you need, you need the um, Holy Spirit, you know, you need something spiritual to help you, someone, okay? Now, so uh, what about in the New Testament, you know, is there a new eighth, eighth, thing, eighth day thing, you know? So I have Matthew 28 and Acts chapter 7 and 2 Peter 2 and Revelations uh, chapter 1. Uh, so I'm going to just ask uh, Gerard, you know, uh, go over it. Okay. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to draw, uh, dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Madarin and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And he gave him the convenient circumcision. And so Abraham beget Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac beget, beget Jacob and Jacob Brigade, the 12 parishes, and spare not the old word, but save nor the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the front upon the word of the ungodly. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind him, behind me, a great voice as of trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou see, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so uh, um, you know, all these uh, verses, uh, where you have reference to the eighth, uh, Jesus resurrected on the eighth day. Uh, it's a Sunday. Sunday is actually the first day of the week uh, because Sabbath is the seventh day, you know, so, you know, that's why uh, they, you know, in the old, old covenant, uh, old Testament, they rest on Sabbath. Uh, in gospel, they rest on Sabbath. Uh, that means the Sabbath is the last day of the week. The Saturday is the last day of the week. So Sunday is the first, you know, it's, that's why they call weekend. You know, weekend is um, the end of the week is Saturday. And then so Sunday, 
the day of worship for the believers or Christian believers. Uh, it is Sunday. That's why we, this is also called the Lord's Day, you know, like in Revelation chapter one. The Lord's Day is, uh, is the Sunday. It's the day, you know, of worship, you know. Uh, yeah, we no longer practice the, uh, the Sabbath. Because why? Because uh, we are in the new creations. You know, we, we are resurrected. Yes, we are resurrected. Uh, so we, we, we uh, worship the Lord on his day of resurrection, you know, on, on, the, on the first day of the week. It's a new creation. It's a new creation. You know, it's not the original seven days. So it is actually quite clear, you know, if you understand, you know, why uh, the old, old uh, even the, the uh, Mosaic law, you know, they, they, uh, the first seven days, no good. It's not good enough. There's nothing in the, from the creation that can save people, not even Moses, okay? And, and uh, so, you know, you have to wait till the eighth day. So the eighth day uh, is, uh, is uh, showing, you know, uh, in the new creation, it's a, it's a new, new life, you know? And, and so, you know, that's why all the um, uh, Old Testament, you know, they, they have to uh, 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 spend so much time uh, you know, uh, you know, wait till the eighth day before they can be consecrated. Because why? Because all the sacrifice, all the animal sacrifice, actually is pointing to Jesus. That's why the animal have to be without blemish, because Jesus have no sin. Jesus has no sin, so all the animals is sacrifice are picture of Jesus. Uh, fulfill all the all the sacrifice for us. Jesus on the cross is the fulfillment of all the animal sacrifice. You know, those are, were just a credit card, you know, um, you know, because uh, they didn't know Jesus that time, you know, so, so uh, they, they, they obey, you know, they all, all confident and then they, they would practice that and they say, you know, by, by, by the animals, but you know, that they are plants, you know, that's why, you know, the one, the one that, uh, um, you know, get get it done right is on, on the eighth day, you know. So, um, yeah, just keep in mind, you know. Um, now, yeah, so uh, so that's the reason, you know, that uh, the first seven days, you know, is, uh, they can prepare, they can uh, get it ready, uh, but uh, they just stay there seven days. Uh, they cannot get out, they're just getting themselves ready. So that on the eighth day, you know, the consecration actually comes, you know. Uh, I mean, they can go through all the mumbo jumbo, you know, but but it's the first seven days, not good enough. They have to abide seven days. Yes, they have to go through the natural life, but really the spiritual and supernatural is only come from the Christ Jesus. Now, uh, but something happened. Something happened uh, in chapter 10. Uh, it's, um, you know, uh, the Torah portion called it a church, but I'm going to tell you, you know, there's something happened. Uh, chapter 10, verse 1 to 3, please. And Nepta and Arabu, Arahil, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and over the strange fire before the Lord which he commanded them not and there went out fire from the Lord and devoted them and they died before the Lord then Moses said unto Aaron this is it that the Lord spoke saying I will be sent to fight in them that come nine me and before all the people I will be glorified and Aaron held his peace. Mm. Okay, thank you. So yeah, well, you know, to the people's mind you know, is very tragic because chapter nine was a very good day. The Lord showed his glory. So the whole congregation saw it and then the sacrifice was accepted, you know, and uh, so, you know, it would have been a good ending for 
for the consecration of the priest and high priest. It would have been a good day, you know. But then in chapter 10, you know, right at the beginning, you know, and then it mentioned, wow, you know, two of the son of Aaron. Um, what happened? Well, first of all, talk about what they did. They uh, have their own sensors. And then they put their own fire in it. You know, it's not fire from heaven. You know, they put their fire in it. And then they put incense there on. So basically, it's uh, to the law. To the law, you know, this is a strange fire. In other words, it was not commanded by the law. You know, um, in chapter 8, you know, they were told, you know, stay put, you know, and uh, uh, the Mo Moses would uh, carry out what the law told Moses, and then they would follow, and then they would excel it. Got it right, but uh, these two, uh, these two uh, uh, older sons, these are two older sons, uh, Nadab and Abihu. By the way, you know these two guys uh, went with the seventy elders, went up to half height to the um, to the Mount Sinai. They were alongside with. Um, uh, they have a banquet uh, up there, you know, with the law. So you know this guy, um, you know, somehow you know. Think uh, too much of themselves, Nadab and Abihu. Two of them, um, they 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 died before the law. The fire came out from the law and devoured them, and they died before the law. Yeah, so so sad for them. Hmm. Uh, but you know, of course, um, you know that's a very sad thing for Moses and Aaron. You know, and uh, so so Moses said to them, and that is. He states the Lord spoke saying, I will be sanctified in them that come near me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. Now, this, this, is, um, this is a very strange thing. In other words, uh, I know, you know, a lot of people uh, want to be religious leaders. They want to be religious leaders. But, you know, this is a special thing about religious leaders. In other words, you know, uh, the law, you know, even for Moses' time, and then all, you know, in different times, you know, he has a higher requirement, higher, much higher requirement for those uh, call themselves religious leaders, you know, pastor, minister, bishop, uh, deacons, elders, you know, even Sunday school teachers <laughs> have a higher, because, because, uh, you know, uh, they might not realize it, you know, the law actually, uh, you know, uh, make that this statement in a way, you know, it's saying, hey, you know, I will, I will be make, uh, look holy. I will be make ho holy for with those that, that come near me. Now it can be one way that uh, when they follow the law, you know, they really, you know, follow the law holy, follow the law completely, you know, uh, it may be that, or, but it can be also uh, uh, on the on the opposite side, you know, in other words, uh, things that uh, might happen to them, you know, if um, they are uh, profane, the profane the, the name of the law. Yeah, so in other words, uh, they are not uh, following uh, the law's command. They, uh, they, they are doing a DIY. DIY, you know. So, uh, you know, I hate to say that, but uh, I, I think this is like the end of times. And uh, so, you know, we need to think about that because a lot of time, the denomination, they think they are not commanded by the law. A lot of, a lot of denominations, they, they think it's okay, but uh, it's not, you know. For example, uh, one of the things is about baptism. You know, a lot of time, you know, there are denominations that preach that, uh, if, uh, if you're not fully immersed, if you're not fully immersed, then uh, you're not following the Bible. So in other words, you know, those denominations that talk about full immersion baptism uh, are, are the only way. In other words, uh, all the other uh, denominations are no good, you know, because uh, they, they, uh, their, their practice is uh, not according to the Bible or so forth. And uh, so as a result, you know, they Kind of saying, you know, the other denominations are, are not as good. Uh, in fact, uh, 
you know, they, you know, they won't invite them uh, to be on the uh, podium. Uh, they won't invite them uh, to be their pastor. Uh, so in other words, it's like talking uh, like, a, like a hand or arm talking about, oh, the, the leg is no good. The leg is too low. The, they are lower. They are, they are not as good as us. So uh, we cannot accept them, you know. So it's, uh, it's like the body of Christ. Uh, some people, you know, you know uh, with their own additional command, they have their own com- additional command. So it's not just uh, practicing the old covenant. It is already bad enough, but also at adding on their own com- commandments, you know, that uh, they have to be this way. Otherwise, they are not equal to us, you know. That, you know, you, you notice uh, this, is, uh, this is just an example, of course, you know. Now, I'm not saying they're not safe. I'm not saying they're not safe. Uh, because a lot of time, you know, they are, there's a lot of people uh, that are not uh, com- complete in, uh, in their faith, you know, in every way, you know. Uh, uh, it's only Jesus. They make us all, you know, perfect. Okay. Uh, so we have the righteousness of God, you know, because of Jesus. So uh, those, everyone, all the denomination that believe Jesus Christ is the Savior, they will go to heaven. But at the same time, you know, they might be, uh, uh, you know, teaching or thinking or have a wrong belief, wrong belief, you know. So, so as a result, you know, uh, you know, like the two older sons of Aaron, <laughs> the first generation of uh, high priest and priest, the two older son, uh, they did, uh, they die before the law. So they might go to heaven uh, earlier. I don't know, you know. Uh, but I actually, I believe, you know, because uh, Jesus, um, you know, said that, you know, whoever believe in him and uh, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So, you know, I believe that all, all denominations, uh, all the people in different denominations that believe in Jesus Christ as the Savior, they will go to heaven. But then at the same time, you know, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. You know, it doesn't mean uh, they necessarily live long and prosper because um, uh, that is, that's uh, different matters because they, a lot of time, you know, they, uh, the church, they only uh, preach about the, you know, salvation for next life. You know, they're not teaching about healing. They're not teaching about the living God. You know, Jesus is living God. In other words, he is living now. He's blessing every one of us, you know. He want a living relationship with each one of us. You know, that's why the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not let anything. So, you know, we believe in Jesus is the savior, you know, and then Holy Spirit live in our heart, you know. And, um, but, you know, the problem is, um, you know, uh, it, there's a lot of time, you know, the the high church, the, the church, you know, uh, that, the main, mainstream church, you know, there are a lot of times they only preach that, you know, uh, you believe in Jesus Christ, uh, you after you die, you go to heaven. That's it. You know, they don't preach other things. That is, that is the problem, you know, because the law did not command them uh, to stop at that. Uh, you know, the law have actually, you know, abundant life to offer. But, you know, a lot of time, you know, the, the teaching elders, the pastors, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the religious leaders, you know, they, they, they're not, they're not, they're not getting the full, you know, teaching the full, full, um, uh, 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 teaching of Christ. Now, so what happened, uh, you know, after the two guys die, you know, there are two, two more sons remain. And then, uh, so it's uh, in the book of Leviticus, uh, chapter 10, the same chapter. And so I'm going to ask uh, Gerard, read that chapter 10 first, uh, verse 6. Uh, are you there, Gerard? <laughs> yes, okay. I'm here. I, I, I got the meal, I'm sorry. Yeah. And Moses said unto Aaron, and unto Eleazar, and unto him. It ma is ma his sons, and cover not your heads, neither rend your clothes, lest ye die 
at least worth come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the Lord had kindled. Mm. But Jesus held his peace. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is what happened. Uh, uh, Moses said to Aaron, and then the two remaining sons, you know, there are four sons of Aaron. Two, two uh, the older born, you know, the first and second died. And then Eleazar and Itama is the uh, two remaining sons. And, <laughs> and uh, so the command was uncover not your heads, uh, neither rend your clothes, lest you die and lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well the burning which the law had kindled. Right now, uh, this is very weird. That was like 3,500 years ago, 35, you know, 35, 3,400 years ago. Uh, but actually, that is a prophecy. What prophecy? Well, what happened was uh, in Jesus' time. When Jesus was in uh, in the court of the high priest, uh, that actually happened, and so that prophecy come true in Jesus' time. So I'm going to ask um, uh, a Gerard to finish reading the uh, Matthew 26. But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, "I adjure thee by the living God." And thou shalt thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, The hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He had spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of witness, witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. What can ye? What think ye? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him and others smote him with the palm of their hands, saying, Prophecy unto us then Christ, who is that smote thee? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so this happened 2,000 years ago uh, when Jesus was in the court of the high priest. And so, you know, uh, the, the act was, uh, you know, they, they asked, uh, you know, whether he's uh, who he is. And then he, he accepted, you know, he's the son of man, son of God and son of man. And then, and then you will see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power. Now, uh, right there, the high priest ran his clothes. Well, what's that mean? Well, because uh, the prophecy was in Leviticus 10, verse 6, it said that do not uh, uncover your head. You know, they are supposed to keep the, uh, you know, the head gear on. And then neither rent your clothes, lest you die, and lest wrath come upon all the people. All the people of who? Of children of Israel. Yeah. So when Jesus died, uh, was on the cross, and then he resurrected, and then now he's in heaven sitting on the right hand of the Father. And then, yeah, he will come in the clouds of heaven. Because now Jesus is the new high priest. Jesus is the great high priest. So what happened? What happened was by the act of uh, tearing up his own garment, because the garment of the priest represents his righteousness. You know, he was allowed to be a priest. Not because he is not sinful, but it's because he was wearing the garment. The garment represents, you know, his the right standing before the temple, before God, you know. 
you know, he has a right standing. He has a right righteousness, you know. But you know, when he torn his own the garment, you know, that means the the that was the end of the high priest. No more, and the people also get judged. You know, that's why you know after Jesus resurrected, uh, went up to heavens by AD seventy, AD seventy, 公元七零年 You know, the Romans come and destroy Jerusalem, and also, you know, uh, destroy the temple. In、uh, in the Jewish calendar, both Temple of Solomon and te Temple of、uh, uh, Jesus' time, both of them were destroyed on the same calendar day, same month, and same day. So it, it's all from God. It's all from God. Yes, but you know, because God's word says so. You know, the high priests are not supposed to,、um, you know, at any at any one time, you know,、uh, you know,、uh, you know, they、uh, destroy the picture of the high priest、uh, righteousness. But when he tear up his own、uh, garments, you know, he is also、uh, put a condemnations on the class of the high priest. No more high priest. You know, no more high priest. You know, since eighty、uh, seventy, no more temple, no more high priest, no more old covenant. You cannot practice old covenant. You know, even if you build a new temple, you know whether it's in the right place or wrong place, it doesn't matter. You know, there's no more because Jesus is the great high priest. Jesus, you know, he uh uh born himself to be the sacrifice for all mankind, but he is also the temple. He is also the great high priest. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so there is、uh, further things,、uh, you know, talking about the two two sons, the remaining son. So I'm going to ask uh, 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 Gerard to read the、uh, finish the chapter ten、uh, story. Chapter ten. Uh, this is chapter five. Uh, 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 forget about the、uh, the dark part. You know, this is the title.、Oh. This is okay. And twelve. <clears throat> and Moses spake unto Aaron and unto Elisa and unto Ithama, his sons that were left. Take me.、Uh, take the meat offering. That remain of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and eat it without leaving beside the altar, for it is most holy, and ye shall eat it in the holy place, because it is thy deal and thy sons deal of the sacrifices of the Lord made by fire, for I am commanded. And Moses diligently sought the gold of the sin offering, and behold, it was burnt. And he was angry with Eli, Elisa, and Imah, Ithama, the sons of Aaron, which were left alive, saying, "Where torn have ye not eaten the sin offering in the holy place?" Seeing it is most holy, and God hath given it you to bear the iniquity, 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 iniquity of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord. And Aaron said unto Moses, Behold, this day have they offered their sins offering. And their burnt offering before the Lord, and that such things have befallen me. And if I had eaten the sin offering today, shall it have been accepted in the sight of the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he was content.、Mm. Okay, so uh, in uh, in a way, to the Aaron's family is a tragedy. Of course, you know, four uh, two hour four sons are die, and then the leftover were Eliezer and Itama. Uh, but you know, you find out, hey, you know, Moses uh, actually, as usual, you know, he get uh, angry. 
you know, Moses uh, get angry a lot of times, you know, in the last 40 years, because under the law, you know, people get angry. You know, Moses uh, especially is a picture, you know, so uh, if you see, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, people, uh, you know, they, they are supposed to be Christian and so forth. You know, the reason why they ang get angry, you know, sometimes is because they still have a Moses in their heart. Yeah, they, they are not looking to Jesus 100%. You know, a lot of times, you know, they still practice the Ten Commandments and so forth. But anyway, to make it simple, actually in chapter 8, you know, they already offer the same offering and so forth. So it was not that at all, you know. So Moses was confused, you know, when under stress, when under stress, you know, people that practice Ten Commandments, they 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 would um, sadly, um, you know, uh, you know, totally confused, you know, and then uh, get in more trouble, and uh, they get angry at uh, their at, at their own own uh, family, uh, you know. Anyway, uh, it's not a good thing. But anyway, so uh, that's what happened. Chapter eight, nine, and ten. Now, in our New Testament. In our New Testament, Jesus has fulfilled. He, he did not come to destroy the law. The law is perfect. It's the law of God. So it's perfect. But he did not destroy the law. Jesus come to fulfill all the law. In other words, all 613 law or whatever law, you know, there in, in, in the whole book of Moses, Jesus has fulfilled it. Jesus has fulfilled it. So you don't have to worry about all these, you know, five offerings, you know, about, you know, uh, this and that, you know. And then we are already make priests. We are already make kings and priests. You know, Jesus is the king of kings. You know, those are kings are the other people, the other believers <laughs> in Jesus Christ. So when we go to New Jerusalem, <coughs> Heavenly Jerusalem, we, we are the kings and priests. But actually, we are already kings and priests. You know, according to the uh, New Testament, we are already kings and priests. The problem is uh, a lot of time, you know, the, the religious leaders still uh, want you to be uh, a servant. You know, uh, we are just a slave. We are servants. Uh, don't be so uh, high and mighty, you know. No, you know, we, we believe in what Jesus said. Don't follow the uh, Moses and, uh, the, you know, the servants. You know, um, because uh, you know that you know they if they still practice in ten commandments, uh, living like a slave, you know they are not uh, in new covenant because uh, the, the law already given uh, uh, you know the liberty to us. You know now we are sons and daughter of God. We are sons and daughter of God. You know, keep that in mind. Now, but you know even Eliezer has meaning. Eliezer has meaning. Uh, so, you know, these two guys, you know, there's the two, two uh, um, you know, kind of like a second generation high priest. You know, Aaron is the first high priest. And so the, the remaining two sons, Eliezer and Itamar, has meaning. So I'm going to ask uh, Gerard to read uh, from Numbers and also First Chronicle. And Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest shall be chief over the chief of the Levites and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Elisa than of the sons of Ithama, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Elisa, there were 16 chief men of the house of their fathers, and eighth among the sons of Ithama, according to the house of their father. Mm, okay. Elisa, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. So Eliezer, you know, means that God help or God has help. Uh, Itama uh, means a, a coast of the palm tree of a palm tree. Coast of a palm tree means, uh, you know, uh, all the palm tree. Uh, try to sit, uh, stand straight, but usually they end up, uh, you know, kind of tilted a little bit, you know, depend on the wind, you know. So 
So the palm, you know, kind of looks straight, you know, uh, and, and look righteous, but it, it's not really totally straight. <laughs> and the coast is like uh, the ground, the ground of the palm tree, you know. So in other words, uh, Itama is kind of like uh, relying on his own, his own strength, his own righteousness, you know. But Eliezer is uh, God help. God has help, you know. Now, uh, and then you notice in the number three, chapter three. And and so uh, as a result of the two older son die, you know, and then both of them do not have children. So Eliezer end up being uh, the next high priest. Eliezer is the second high priest. Okay. Uh, Itama uh, can also, you know, help too, you know, because, uh, you know, both of them are remaining sons. But, you know, the story is like First Chronicle in uh, David's time, then you would find that Eliezer have more uh, high uh, people of high position, the descendant of Eliezer. How many more? They have 16 of them. In other words, you know, Eliezer have 16 uh, descendants at David's time, uh, more than uh, Itama. Itama have only eight. So is there a meaning for that? You know, in the Old Testament, one of the um, uh, uh, way of describing God's uh, blessing is uh, when you have double portion. Double portion means what? You know, uh, everyone else have one, one, you know, one portion, and then you have double. So the first spawn, uh, a lot of times, you know, if uh, it's done, uh, uh, you know, by by the rule of the uh, father, is that uh, the first born or the, the one that are blessed will get double portion. So Eliezer compared to Itama, Eliezer is more blessed. You, you understand? <laughs> because, um, you know, his sons, you know, I mean, I mean there's a reason why First Chronicle chapter 24, verse 4, said that Eliezer have more sons than Itama. <laughs> it's a, it's a kind of giving you a hint, you know, that Eliezer turned out to have more, you know, uh, blessed uh, in, in terms of the line, the lineage. Yeah. So now, so, uh, you know, in one sense, you know, uh, Eliezer, his name uh, has a much better meaning uh, than uh, the other one. The other one is kind of relying on the ground, the ground or, or, uh, below the palm tree. So, uh, you know, I mean, you know, he's somewhat righteous, you know, but uh, it's cute, you know, it's uh, kind of banned, you know, uh, because of the wind or, you know, uh, you, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's not uh, really, really, uh, you know, fully righteous, you know. Uh, so uh, that is one. And then, and then also, it is uh, also means helper. Where well, God has help, right? So uh, in the uh, New Testament, you know, there's a uh, one person that is called helper, and is in John chapter fourteen. Uh, Gerard, can you help us? Yes, John fourteen, and I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth whom the world cannot receive, because it see him not, neither know him, but ye know him for the dwell with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Mm. Okay, so uh, this, this is in the uh, uh, upper room. So he is talking to the, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, disciples. Uh, personally. So that means that he's also addressing the church, chapter 14. And then he said, I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter. Also means helper. You know, help, helper, who is the helper? Is the spirit of truth. And then he will be in you, he dwell with you, and he shall be in you. In other words, this is talking about Jesus said, you know, when I leave, and I will give you another Another, you know, because he, he himself also was a helper to all, all the disciples, Jesus himself, right? But, you know, he, he's going to come, you know, there's another one. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter, 
is the helper and he's the superior truth. Uh, other people won't see it because he's in you. So, but you know him, you know who the Holy Spirit, because everyone that believes in Jesus Christ, no matter how dumb he is, you know, he knows that he should know because the God's word says so, you know, he should know, you know, Holy Spirit is in you. Okay, a lot of time people say, oh, Holy Spirit have left because I have seen, you know. <laughs> there are people that, you know, I, I used to be, you know, kind of, you know, uh, thing, thing, you know, because of the religious leader thing, you know. Um, you know, you, you listen to one church or one denomination or, um, you know, some bishop or something, and they tell you things, you know, because uh, they apparently they might not have Holy Spirit. <laughs> but according to the word of the Christ, Christ Jesus said that you have the Holy Spirit and you will know him. And uh, yeah, and he's in you, okay? Uh, so anyway, Eliezer also have, um, means a helper. So I, 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 I give it to you, you know, that Eliezer is a picture, is a picture of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Now, having said that, I'm going to share with you some of the things that I found, uh, you know, you know, apparently, both uh, Eliezer and also uh, his uh, brother Itama, they were buried. They were buried in some place, of course. <laughs> and and uh, they were buried in a in a town in the uh, West Bank, uh, where the Palestinian village are. Um, so uh, so uh, this is called the Hill of Phineas. Uh, it's uh, associated with the town called, uh, are you guys looking at it? I, I, I want to make sure you guys saw it. Sometimes, yeah, this is the wiki uh, called a town, uh, a, a, a water, A-W-A-R-T-A, -A -A, you know, so you guys can uh, look up yourself, you know, because uh, a lot of time, you know, I don't know, Google or somebody, you know, try to, <laughs> mess around with uh, our, our, our meeting. But uh, I don't know. Uh, the Hill of Phineas has, uh, you know, apparently uh, has uh, monuments attributed to the priestly family of Aaron. According to their tradition, they are the burial site of two sons, Eliezer and Itama. <laughs> so, so apparently there's uh, such a place, you know, that uh, they claim, you know, I, I don't know if it's true, but uh, they claim that, you know, that uh, uh, that is the in the West Bank, you know. Now the problem is right now the West Bank is, um, uh, you know, uh, they have been occupied by the Palestinian, uh, the Arabs, um, long time, uh, you know, since a uh, you know long history. Uh, but so as a result, you know, uh, see, you know, there's a abota here. And then next to it, you know, there's a settlement uh, called Itama. Itama is, uh, is uh, you know, Israeli settlement. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, the returning Jew. Um, so, you know, they have a lot of confrontation, you know, because uh, a lot of killing and hurting or human rights problems. But, you know, we're not here to talk about that. You know, we are here, you know, to say, hey, you know, uh, yeah, you know, I, I hope that they don't uh, do any evil thing to each other. I pray that, you know, because, um, um, you know, it's not pleasing to the law. It's not pleasing to the law. Yeah. So, you know, uh, but that that is an issue right now. Uh, so this is only about 10 kilometers from uh, Libros. Libros is uh, Shikim, you know, between the two two hills. You know, remember the valley, the Shikim. Yeah. But anyway, so, uh, so uh, you can actually look up, you know, uh, we are not going to spend too much time on it because uh, we have a lot of good stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, it has something to do uh, with um, the name Eliezer. Uh, turn out, you know, you remember Nazareth? The Nazareth uh, was in uh, was dead uh, for four days and Jesus uh, came and then uh, he uh, resurrected Nazareth. And uh, so that's uh, in the John chapter 11, sorry. And then turn out Nazareth means Eliezer. So Nazareth also has, is a picture of the Holy Spirit. 
<laughs> so I'm going to ask uh, uh, Gerard to read the two verses from chapter five, 11. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days and two days still in the same place where he was. Okay, right. So, uh, you know, this family is very special because uh, Jesus um, kind of called, you know, the, uh, the family in uh, uh, Bethany, uh, you know, where Martha and uh, Mary and also Nazareth live, you know, and, and it's like a, a, a it's like a home to Jesus. You know what? I think, you know, these three uh, brother and sister, uh, they are actually representing the church. The Martha and Mary and Nazareth. Yeah, because Nazareth represents the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also in, in the Christ, you know, body of Christ in, in the church as well, you know. So, you know, this is really what it is about. So, uh, yeah, so uh, he uh, heard that uh, uh, Nazareth was sick, you know, and then he he um, he wait uh, two more days, two more days, like uh, two two thousand years, wait two, and then now he's coming, <laughs> coming, coming to. Uh, uh, so it's a uh, continue in the chapter eleven of John. Uh, uh, Gerard, can you read for us? Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again and the uh, resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever live and believed in me shall never die. Believe thou this. Okay, so, uh, so uh, you know, this is the conversation between Martha and Jesus. And then later on, you know, uh, Mary uh, come out from the home and then Jesus said the same thing to uh, Mary also. So, yeah, Mary said, um, I mean, Jesus said that uh, to all the believers. Yes, believe. Yes, you know, uh, some people might have, um, uh, you know, departed, you know, uh, last two years. But just believe that, you know. Your your families, your um, your loved ones, uh, will be resurrected and they will rise again. So uh, believe that you know, it, it's not just to Martha but also to Mary, and then you know Nazareth did uh, rise again. <laughs> yeah. So so continuing on the same chapter, and uh, uh, yeah, Gerard, can you read, read, uh, continue read for us? Okay. Um... Jesus therefore again groaning in himself come to the grave. It was a cave that a stone lied upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Mother, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if you shall and if you thou and if thou would believe thou should see the glory of God then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said Father I thank thee that thou hast heard me mm -hmm. yeah so, so this is the, 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 the very uh, interesting part. You know, uh, in order for the dead man to come out, uh, you have to remove the stone first. You have to remove the stone. In other words, uh, let me put it um, uh, as a picture. In order for a man to experience the resurrection, or experience uh, any miracle in order for the person to, in order to see the new covenant living and uh, blessing you uh, for your family and for yourself, someone have to take away the stone. In other words, the, the stone represents the 10 commandments. You know, uh, 
in order for a, a, a miracle to happen, you cannot keep the Ten Commandments in your heart. So this is actually the first thing, the first thing. And, 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 and so, you know, people that uh, try to, that's the reason why, you know, uh, in uh, Paul's uh, letters, he said the Jew looking for miracle and the Greek are looking for wisdom. You know why the Jew cannot uh, get too much miracle? Uh, but they're looking for it. You know why? Because uh, most of the Jew, you know, they are well trained in the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses. In fact, they read that. They read the Torah every Sabbath. <laughs> That's why uh, we, we, we uh, read the Torah portion also. Now, but the difference uh, between them and us is we, uh, in the Torah portion, we find Jesus. Then it would be, a, you know, great. But, you know, if you just read uh, the Torah portion, you know, thinking about Moses, you cannot get miracle. You, know, you, you cannot get healed. You know, Jesus cannot heal you because uh, you are not believing in Jesus. You know, you're believing in the Ten Commandments, the stone, which is the ministry of death. Paul said that, you know, the Ten Commandments are the ministry of death, you know, somewhere in the Bible. So, um, you, you, you know, if you don't believe it, you can look it up, you know. But <laughs> so in order for miracle to happen, in, uh, in order to see the resurrection and the life, the, the stone have to be lowered away first. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, keep in mind. And then, and then uh, yeah, now it's uh, getting to, to the climax, uh, 11, 43 and 44, please. <laughs> and when he thus has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so Jesus, after the stone was rolled away, and then Jesus spoke. Remember, you know, in order for the miracle to happen, you have to look at the stone first. You know, you cannot uh, try to keep Ten Commandments and then expect, uh, you know, miracles and signs and miracles. No, you cannot. You won't, you won't get it. Okay. Now, Nazareth, come forth. You know, that is the, uh, the simple command. Actually, it's not Nazareth. It's, uh, like I said, it's uh, Eliezer. Eliezer, come forth. You know, well, why? Because uh, Jesus, being a Hebrew man, is talking to a, a Hebrew family. The son is called Lazarus in Greek, but his uh, actual Hebrew name is Eliezer. Mm -hmm. Eliza meets the helper. So Eliza, come out, come forth, you know. <laughs> so that is a miracle. Yes, the dead become living again. The dead become living again. And it's an Eliza. So in other words, in order for the uh for the miracle to happen, first thing is make sure you you're not uh, you know uh, holding on the the, the 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 Ten Commandments, you're not holding on the old covenant. And then the next thing is the the Holy Spirit will come forth. And then and then you know life and then the person will be alive again. You know, and then uh, you know all these clothes, all this uh, garment of um, you know uh, you know slavery, garments of uh, uh, you know, you know, that bind him, you know, become loose and so forth, in order, you know, for the Holy Spirit to bless you. Um, you know, you, you need to think, you know, this is the helper. The helper, how? Because uh, if you are holding on the Ten Commandments, don't worry, uh, you, know, you won't get it, sorry. Uh, um, so, you know, is that the only time? You know, no, you know, in uh, Matthew chapter four, you know, when Jesus was tempted by the, uh, the devil, uh, it's uh, also talking, comparing the stone and also God's word. Uh, can you read that, Ajara? Stone, west word of Christ. 
And when the tempter came to him and he said, if thou, shall, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. So it's really the word of God, you know, versus the stone. You know, the stone is uh, just the Ten Commandments, you know, the ministry of death. But the word of God is, you know, uh, this is what Jesus said, you know. Uh, that is the, 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 the new covenant. So uh, as a result, uh, so what we're seeing is this. What we're seeing is, like, uh, like last time, you know, we already talked about the uh, Mosaic law, the Levitical offerings, the five different types. Uh, you know, they have limited uh, term. You know, they, uh, they don't have health benefit. They don't have wealth benefit. And uh, their, their uh, sin offering is only good for a maximum of one year. That's why they have young keeper. Uh, but, you know, uh, when they were living, according to Jeremiah, when they were living in Egypt, uh, they have that Passover lamb. Passover lamb is a really good picture of Jesus. It's a supernatural and spiritual uh, blessing. Uh, because that one year old lamb, you know, is uh, for the blessing for the whole family, salvation for the family, and also, and then give them health and wealth. You know, when they receive the, uh, the Passover lamb, you know, that night, they, they have health, and that night they have wealth. And uh, so, you know, this is a picture of Jesus Christ, okay? And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we share about this, and um, yeah, so Christ Jesus, uh, you know, he given us, uh, you know, all these five different offerings on the left side is uh, kind of limited, you know, and then, but they are all pictures of Jesus. Jesus did it once and for all. And so the meal offering is the communion, and we're going to, at the end of this uh, meeting, we're going to have a communion together for the blessing of uh, us and also the family in Jesus' name. Now, uh, this, this is, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, just a follow up, you know, talking about the, the two sons that we made. So, uh, uh, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Gerard to finish reading it. And, uh, and okay. Then, uh, the, you know. Now, these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Neta and Arihil, Elisa and Ithama, Ithama. But Neta and Abimhil died before their father and had no children. Therefore, Eliza and Ethema executed the priest's office, and David distributed them both Sada of the sons of Eliza and Ahimelech of the sons of Ethema, according to their office in their service. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Elisa than the sons of Ethema. And thus were they divided. Among the sons of Elisa and Elisa, there were 16 chief men of the house of their fathers, and eighth among the sons of Ethema, according to the house of their fathers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, yeah, we, we kind of see, you know, Eliezer is uh, more like a picture of Holy Spirit. And so the son, uh, the, the first one, uh, uh, you know, lie uh, of Sado, uh, uh, that began uh, to serve uh, the, the Jerusalem uh, temple, is uh, called Sado, is a, is a son, a descendant of Eliezer. But Atama, you know, uh, he did not have uh, such a good thing, you know, because uh, uh, he's, he has a descendant uh, called Eli. Eli is uh, not, uh, uh, did not serve in the uh, Jerusalem temple. He served in the, uh, in the tabernacle that was housed in Shiloh. 
and then he was known as uh, that's why you know the 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 house is called House of Eli, and uh, God uh, had put a curse on on the House of Eli, uh, because uh, he was not a <laughs> a good uh, high priest, uh, and then his uh, two sons uh, were very really bad. You know they lost the um, um, the uh, the uh, art of the conflict to the enemy. Remember. And then they were killed in the in the battle. So anyway, so uh, Itama, as a result, you know that line is under the curse of God. But uh, sad thought, sad thought uh, is means uh, righteousness of God. So you know, and he was uh, the first uh, high priest that served uh, at the time of Solomon. And uh, so you know uh, that even even in the names of the two line of the high priest, it turned out you know they have meaning. Uh, but uh, we cannot cover everything. Uh, but I, I hope, I pray that uh, you, you all have the benefit from it. Now, uh, let's see. In any case, uh, in chapter twelve, you know, it is really weird. But uh, you know, uh, when you understand, you know, the Eliezer is, uh, you know, the the Hebrew name or Nazareth, and then you will see, you know, they are also pictures of Holy Spirit. So in other words, uh, when when the uh, Jew heard about uh, Lazarus, they also want to come to a dinner, and uh, they want to spend time with him. Uh, in, in in fact, uh, you, if you go to uh, Bethany nowadays, you know uh, to the tomb, uh, you know next next door, you know have so many holes, you know because a, a lot of people want to be buried <laughs> next to Lazarus. But anyway, so the point is, you know. Uh, you, uh, because Nazareth have been known to be raised from the dead, and and it is like the Holy Spirit, is a is a is an amazing thing. You know when people heard that Holy Spirit, uh, uh, you know, come with miracle and signs and blessing and healing for you, then uh, other people would come to find Jesus also. You know, so all these verses about Nazareth actually is a. Uh, is a picture of the Holy Spirit, but anyway, uh, we're going to have um, um, you know the the Holy Communion. Um, we're going to skip this one, you know, um, you know, uh, because <laughs> we've been saying too long already. So we're going to read, uh, have this read, and then uh, uh, John chapter six, and then uh, we're going to have Holy Communion. Uh, Jara, can you read for us? Okay, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eat my flesh and drink my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eat my flesh and drink my blood drove me, drove in me, drove in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eat me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eat of this bread shall live forever. Thank you. He that eat of this bread shall live forever. So we're going to hold up the bread, the crumbs, and uh, I'm, I'm going to pray over this. Lord Jesus, I'm thank you that uh, you are giving us your 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 life, your bread. That uh, you broken it for us, and then you give it to us, and uh, uh, we obey and we uh, believe what you said. What you said is from uh, the Father God, and uh, you know, what you said uh, is uh, the truth. So who, whosoever eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, by your strike, by your strike, we are all healed. We are healed from top to our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. After the bread, uh, 
Uh, we have this cup. Thank you, Jesus, uh, that you've given us your drink. Uh, this is the uh, uh, blood of the new covenant that you've given us. And uh, by the new covenant, you remember our sin no more. And thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, um, we have received uh, the righteousness of God in Christ. All the sins are all forgiven. And our prayer will are well much because of you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So uh, we're going to have a closing prayer. Yeah. Lord Jesus, I'm just thankful uh, that uh, we have a good Bible study today. It's not because of me, but because of Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, it is uh, the helper will, uh, will bless everyone uh, that they open their eyes in the name of Jesus. I'm praying particularly now for the uh, people in Hong Kong. There are a lot of people that we know, and uh, it's our, our family or our, our, our people that we know um, in the past. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for them. Uh, that uh, you bless them and give them health and healing and protection and salvation. But uh, also I'm praying for uh, Torah and families. In the name of Jesus, I, I pray for blessing, healing, and uh, provisions and shalom peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless uh, Torah and family. And also all the audience, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for, at the sound of my voice, all the audience. Uh, they are watching now or also in the future on YouTube or on the author. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healing, blessing, protection, provisions, and, uh, and shalom peace. And also for their families in the name of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Another week. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hey, see you next okay. week.